I would like to warmly welcome you all to this remembrance service. You may have attended many of our services over the years, or this may be your first, but for all of you and for the team here at Helen and Douglas House, this is our first virtual service. We know that our previous Remembrance Weekends have brought strength, comfort and companionship in being with people who can in some small way imagine how you are feeling and how it is to experience the grief of losing a child. There would be opportunity to meet friends and to make new ones. So although you may not be in the same room, we want you to know that there were many other families who are listening today and taking part in today's event. And we hope that you find the same solace, peace and hope as if you were here at Helen and Douglas House. Lockdown was hard for everyone, but we know that across the country people felt isolated and this made it harder to bear their grief. Not being able to see friends and family, not being able to hug, not being able to share some conversations and in fact just not being silent with people who know what you are experiencing and who knew your child. So whether you're taking part in this service alone or you're with others, this is a time and an opportunity to reflect and treasure your memories. This virus has changed the world that we all live in. Here at Helen and Douglas House, we've had to make huge adjustments to how we deliver our service and to our environment. But what I believe hasn't changed is the depth of kindness, the quality of the clinical care and the compassion that our staff bestow on all the children and families. So we find ourselves unable to be together in large groups, but we hope by delivering this virtual remembrance service of music, of readings, of memories and of reflections that you can feel a sense of belonging and togetherness with other families and also know that here at Helen and Douglas House we will be here to continue to support you. Step by Step by Kenneth Holmes Some days I need to designate as days of small things because small things are all I can manage on them. So it might be a matter of, I can't do the whole garden, but I can plant one clematis. I can't answer all my letters, but I could write one or two. I can't face everyone, but I could trust one person. I can't solve all my dilemmas, but I can make a list and see whether I could tackle one of them. I can't face my pent up anguish all at once but I could acknowledge and feel a bit of it and release some of the pressure. I can't plan out my whole future, but I could decide on the next small step. I can't stop international conflict, but I could send a loving card or letter to help cement or restore a relationship I care about. I can't tidy my whole house, but I could sort out one file, drawer or cupboard. Just for today, I will have a quiet half hour all by myself and relax. During this half hour, sometime, I will try and get a better perspective on my life. Just for today, I will be unafraid. Especially, I will not be afraid to enjoy what is beautiful and to believe as I give to the world, so the world will give to me. your smile on someone's face your whisper in the wind's embrace through diamond stars and songs and dreams I find your love in everything the sun the sky the rolling sea 
who conspire to comfort me from sorrow's edge life's beauty seems to find your love in everything I've come to trust the hope it brings to find your love in everything even as I fall apart even through my shattered heart I'll catch your smile on someone's face amazing grace He is gone by David Harkins. You can shed tears that he is gone, or you can smile because he has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that he will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that he has left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see him, or you can be full of the love that you shared. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember him and only that he is gone, or you can cherish his memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what he would want. Smile, open your eyes, love and go on.
Down below the surface of a quiet pond lived a little colony of water bugs. They were a happy colony living far away from the sun. For many months they were very busy scurrying over the soft mud on the bottom of the pond. They did notice that every once in a while one of their colony seemed to lose interest in going about with its friends. Clinging to the stem of a pond lily, it gradually moved out of sight and was seen no more. Look, said one of the water bugs to another, one of our colony is climbing up the lily stalk. Where do you suppose she is going? Up, up, up she went slowly. Even as they watched, the water bug disappeared from sight. Her friends waited and waited, but she didn't return. That's funny, said one water bug to another. Wasn't she happy here? asked the second water bug. Where do you suppose she went? wondered a third. No one had an answer. They were greatly puzzled. Finally, one of the water bugs, a leader in the colony, gathered his friends together. I have an idea. The next one of us who climbs up the lily stalk must promise to come back and tell us where he or she went and why. We promise, they said solemnly. One spring day, not long after, the very water bug who had suggested the plan found himself climbing up the lily stalk. Up, up, up he went. Before he knew what was happening, he had broken through the surface of the water and fallen onto the broad green lily pad above. Weary from his journey, he slept. When he woke, he looked about with surprise. He couldn't believe what he saw. A startling change had come to his old body. His movement revealed four silver wings and a long tail. Even as he struggled, he felt an impulse to move his wings. The warmth of the sun soon dried the moisture from his new body. He moved his wings again and suddenly found himself up above the water. He had become a dragonfly. Swooping and dipping in great curves, he flew through the air. He felt exhilarated in the new atmosphere. By and by, the new dragonfly lighted happily on a lily pad to rest. It was then that he chanced to look below to the bottom of the pond. Why, he was right above his old friends, the water bugs. There they were, scurrying about just as he had been doing some time before. Then the dragonfly remembered the promise. The next one of us who climbs up the lily stalk will come back and tell where he or she went and why. Without thinking, the dragonfly darted down. Suddenly he hit the surface of the water and bounced away. Now that he was a dragonfly, he could no longer go into the water. I can't return, he said in dismay. I tried, but I can't keep my promise. Even if I could go back, none of the water bugs would know me in my new body. I guess I'll just have to wait until they become dragonflies too. Then they'll understand what happened to me and where I went. And the dragonfly winged off happily into its wonderful new world of sun and air. May the road rise with you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, and until we meet again. May God hold you in the hollow of his hand. May God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Thank you so much for joining us in our first virtual remembrance service. We hope that this has been meaningful for you. Do remember that if you need us, we are here for as long as you need us. 
And from everybody here at Helen and Douglas House, we wish you well. Thank you.